Welcome, guys. Welcome to Afro Beats Live. Uh, my name is Princess Paula Obaseki, Obatokbe Se. And to my right, we have the beautiful Fadi Kashiru Balogun. Hi, guys. Welcome, welcome. Okay, guys. Now, today in the house, we have a guest that we have never had before. Very, very powerful, beautiful woman in our midst. We have Miss April Ademi Luyi in the building currently running for the prince george's circuit court judge welcome, welcome. welcome. how welcome. are you i am fine thank you for having me may i say you are stunning thank you so much you, you are as stunning. well you thank as well you. how are you feeling this evening i'm feeling great thank you for joining us today we're very glad to have you in the studios with us today thank you for coming thank you and again thank you for having me thank you. you're welcome Okay, so we'd we'll like to just go straight to the point um, of why you're here today. Um, we know that you're running for office, and we'd we'll like for you to tell us a little bit about yourself and your background. Sure, sure. Um, I've been practicing law in Maryland for over nine years, okay. and I represent everyone from low-income Maryland residents to international corporations. I work on bankruptcies, foreclosures, all different types of litigation, uh, intellectual property matters, patents, trademarks, and I've actually been recognized for my success in fighting foreclosures, which is a huge crisis in Prince George's County. Wow. It sure is. You've been very busy. <laughs> yes, I have. It's <laughs> good. Um, so how did you get started with politics? What picked your interest? How did that start? Well, my interest here is running for judge, okay. and judges are not politicians. Right. Right. <laughs> judges are trusted to administer justice. Right. Right. So do you understand that the politicians are the ones that create the laws, right. and the judges are there to interpret and the intent mm -hmm. of the legislator in creating that law exactly. and apply the law in a fair and impartial manner? Mm -hmm. wow. And I have to tell you, in my nine years of practicing law, I've come across judges that don't do just that, oh. um, you know, that have failed in their duties. And in my own experience, in my own professional experience, and in my own personal experiences, I've seen too much of it. And it's important for me to get on the bench and make a change and bring about honesty and integrity to the bench because judges have a lot of power. And that's what and it's all about. Exactly. We have to have people who are empowered to administer justice who are going to be honest. Okay. Wow. Beautifully said. Okay. So we want to take it a little bit back okay so obviously last name Ademi Luyi am I pronouncing it correctly yes you are awesome tell us a little bit about that where are you from a little bit about your childhood sure actually I was born in Baltimore Maryland and I grew up in Prince George's County awesome both of my parents are from Nigeria my father is from Oshun State the town of Ife mm -hmm. and my mother is from Lagos State the town of Okorodu have wow. you been to Nigeria before I have not been to Nigeria since I was young Okay. Don't you want to go? I do want to go. I do. I do. And and it is something I will probably do after I win this seat. Okay. <laughs> the first okay. thing, before I'm sworn in, I'm actually going to take a vacation to Nigeria and relax. That would be awesome. <laughs> so um, has, how has it been for you running for office? Has it been challenging or easy? How has it been? Actually, it is very difficult okay. running for office. And, and I must tell you, um, some of the biggest struggles are because I'm African. Mm -hmm. um, you know, immigrants are vulnerable to discrimination in the justice system. Yeah. Um, we all know that, yes. right? Um, you know, I could tell you, I mean, they've used social media sites to tell people that they shouldn't vote for me because I come from a family of Nigerian criminals, which is not oh, true. Wow. But that's the presumption about Nigerians. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I've even had a black American woman admit to me that she didn't vote for me in the April primary because I was African. But now that she's gotten to know me, she's going to vote for me. Oh, wow. But she cautioned me. She warned me. She said, people must see your face because you don't look African and they have to hear your voice because you don't have an African accent. And that's how you're going to win them over. So it is difficult in that sense. Yeah. I have to work a lot harder than some of the other contestants in this race because I'm African. But it is a fight that is worth it. And as I said, it's all about bringing honesty and integrity to the bench. Right. So it is all worth it. And I'm going to keep fighting for us and everyone else. <laughs> and I must say, I do applaud you because some people will try to hide the fact that they are, you know, who they are just to win or whatever the case may be. So I do applaud you. Not a lot of people are proud to say hey i'm nigerian i am this person i i'm going to bring change not a lot of people 
you know, so I do applaud you for that. That is, thank you. That is awesome. So what is your legacy? What do you have? What's your plan for PG County? Uh, you know, as I said, it, it really starts with this election. And, you know, there's actually two tasks that I'm trying to do in this election. Um, one of them is trying to unseat a judge by the name of Herman Dawson, okay. um, who has failed the community. He's been on the bench for 17 years. Um, I decided to be the first person to challenge a sitting judge in 16 years because he has failed. And as I explained to you earlier, um, I'm just sick and tired of the corruption that I see with judges. And, you know, it was about time for someone to step up and bring about change. I would like to unseat Herman Dawson. Um, and again, bring honesty and fairness to the bench for everyone. One thing, you know, to be African and then one thing to be African-American and then a woman, you know, trying to step forward and do a lot of things in our community these days. What advice, um, like I was saying, I have, you know, some friends that, you know, they want to step up. They want to do this. They want to bring change, but they feel like their voice is not going to be heard because they're women or because, you know, they're African. Um, and, you know, with Hillary running, I, I would also love to know your stance on, you know, the whole Hillary Trump thing. But what advice would you give to young women now who want to step forward, but not only is being a woman, woman holding them back, but also being African or being black? Um, I can tell you I've had a lot of um, personal struggles mm -hmm. in my life um, that would um, that are very difficult for women to overcome. Um, it takes a certain level of faith, um, mm -hmm. having faith in God. Yeah. <laughs> I can tell you that right away. Yeah. Confidence, um, perseverance. Um, you have to have the right mindset to fight. No matter what the obstacles are, whether you're black, white, African, woman, mm -hmm. poor, rich, whatever it is, you know, there's always going to be an obstacle there. Nothing in life is easy. So, I mean, you know, one thing I can say is you have to have the right mindset, you know, be confident, be strong, uh, have perseverance. You got to have faith in something yes. um, and keep pushing forward. You know, that's one thing about all the difficult challenges that I've had in my lifetime, and I've taken on quite a few of them. Um, you have to be steadfast and you have to see victory at the end of the tunnel. And as long as you can always see that, you keep going no matter what's there. They knock you down, you get right back up and keep fighting. Don't give up. Yeah. Thank you. I love that. Thank you. All right. Um, so I just wanted to know for the Africans or Nigerians in the community, do you have plans to come up with a program or something to help them um, as far as... Um, just to kind of offer assistance to them? I actually do. I mean, as of right now, we're campaigning and we're focusing on trying to mobilize the African community, which is very difficult. I mean, it, we have a huge population. And right now, I'm all, unfortunately, because I'm running for a Prince George's County seat, I'm focused on Prince George's County. Mm -hmm. um, you know, but after I win this seat, I would like to go beyond Prince George's County and, you know, focus my time on educating the African community on their rights, encouraging citizenship, encouraging voting, um, just so that people have knowledge of what they can and cannot do in this country. I mean, it's, it's so unfortunate that a lot of us come over here and we don't realize uh, you know, the rights and privileges that we have yeah. here yeah. <laughs> that we don't have in Nigeria. And I think we could live a better life if we are aware of those things. Um, so one of the biggest things that I want to do is start, you know, raising this kind of awareness campaign, um, traveling to African churches all over the state, not just Prince George's County, getting to know the community, encouraging them, educating them on their rights and what they can and cannot do to live a better life here in America. Awesome. That's great. That's good. Good. That's really great. Okay, so tell us a little bit about your educational background. We know you're super intelligent. Yeah, <laughs> tell us a little bit about that. Uh, sure, I have a bachelor's of science in chemical engineering from the University of Maryland College Park. Awesome. And then I went on to earn my law degree from George Mason. And I earned my law degree in 2007, so I've been in practice for about two, for nine years now. So why did you make the switch? Um, actually, when I started off, I was going to go into patent law. Okay. Right. So oh, patent lawyers focus on to. protecting science inventions. Oh, okay. So, you know, a technical background is actually required for that kind of position. Oh, okay. So. Gotcha. Okay. So do you have plans to go further beyond, um, you know, PG County, maybe Senate or president or something? At the moment, no. <laughs> right now, my focus is on fixing the justice system, which we need. Okay. Okay, so um, I want to ask you this. When we were preparing for the interview, um, we did some research and we found 
that you were involved in a lawsuit with a certain Mr. Phillips, I believe that's his name. Would you like to talk some more about that situation? Sure. Um, four years ago, uh, I was attending a National Bar Association conference in Tampa, Florida. Okay. And I was in the hospitality seat of the president of the association. Um, his name is Daryl Parks, who at the time was representing the family of Trayvon Martin. Um, there was a party in his room uh, late in the evening. And myself and another woman, we were drugged at that party. We were taken out of the room and we were raped by two lawyers. Oh, wow. Wow. Sorry to hear that. <laughs> yeah, how has the case, you know... The case is still ongoing. Um, it's been a four-year legal battle. Uh, it's not even close to ending. Mm. Um, it, it is a very complicated situation because of all the people involved. Um, they didn't want me to see justice in a case like that because mm. of where it happened. Um, mm. You know, as I said, it happened in the president of the National Bar Association's hospitality suite. They didn't exactly. want women in the association knowing that there are men in that association that like to drug and rape women at their parties. Right. Um, so I got a lot of pushback and a lot of difficulty in trying to get justice in that case. And as I said, also, the, uh, the president of the association, he was representing the family of Trayvon Martin. So he had a huge media campaign going on at the same time. Right. Um, so, you know, I, I fought for justice. I mean, I want it to end. I want them to stop drugging and raping women at these conferences. Um, but as I said, you know, it happened down in Tampa, Florida, which is their turf. Um, you know, the, the state's attorney, the local state's attorney happened to be a very close friend of the president of the National Bar Association who had the party. So I did not, I didn't see any fairness in that case. Um, which is actually one of the things that pushed me to run for judge. I mean, I've, I've faced my own injustice. Right. Um, you know, I know how difficult it is. I mean, people would be surprised at the level of corruption that goes on in the justice system in America. I mean, I think now the Black Lives Matter movement is actually waking people up. You know, they see the police officers are corrupt, but it's not just police officers. No, yeah. It's the prosecutors. It's the judges. It's the entire justice the system. system. Exactly. Corruption happens with, I mean, throughout it. You know, so, you know, in my own personal struggles, and I, I was actually kind of hinting at it earlier, that, you know, these are the sort of things that I've gone through in my life that have just made me sick and tired of the corruption that have made me want to actually seek this judge position to bring about change for everyone you know not just Africans but for the poor the rich everyone we need a fair shot we need honest people on the bench that are going to administer justice okay so let me ask you this um, if you had a rape case um, in the courtroom when you eventually become a judge would it be difficult for you to you know um, I guess be a judge on that case because of personal reasons? Do you think you'll be able to? Actually, it would not be difficult. Okay. Um, I think because it's happened to me, I'm a lot smarter in rape cases than your typical judge who has not experienced that sort of situation. I mean, there's a lot to cases that I, that I now understand because I've gone through it. Mm -hmm. Um, but I don't think I would have a difficult time at all. I mean, you know, I, I stepped on the bench to, to take an oath to administer justice fairly. If I think I can't take that on, of course, I would recuse myself from that case. But I don't think I would have any difficulties hearing any kind of rape cases or violence against women. So are you planning to um, start some type of organization for rape victims to help them out? People who can't afford, you know, maybe an attorney or whatever it is to get help. I think once my case wraps up, those are projects that I would like to work on. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, absolutely. I mean, I'd, I'd like to do whatever I can to help all those that have been in that situation. It is a terrible ordeal, you know, yes. and regardless sure. of, of where it happens or the circumstances, um, you know, rape is a very difficult topic for women. And it is a topic that most women stay silent about their entire lives and do nothing. Mm -hmm. And the very few that decide to step up and, and seek justice in it, uh, you go through a terrible ordeal in trying to get justice. So it is absolutely something I want to work on when my own case wraps up. I would like to start programs to help other women that are in that situation. Okay, that sounds fine. So um, what's your take on the elections? Um, are you a, a Democrat or a Republican? I mean... Well, because I'm running for judge, mm -hmm. um, we are not allowed to get into politics at all. Okay. You know, judges are supposed to be neutral. Okay. As I said, the role of a judge is to interpret the intent of the legislator and, and apply the laws in a fair and impartial manner. You can't apply the laws in a way that is aligned with your political interest. Exactly. Um, so judges are required to stay out of politics. Okay. So we, you know, we, 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 as a matter of fact, when you see our names on the ballot, you're not going to see any political party. Okay. That's great. Okay, so really quick, a really fun question. Um, right now, your top five 
empowering women in the society today? Top five. Yeah. Um, Michelle Obama. Definitely. <laughs> Definitely. Oprah. Definitely. <laughs> um, let's see. Justice Sotomayor. Okay. Right. Um, let's see why I'm at three. So three. I have two more. Two to more. Go. Two more. Um, it can be anybody. Anybody at all. Any. Beyonce. <clears throat> <laughs> um your mom my mom is one she Aww. is one well since she said it can be anybody okay. yeah i mean anybody, anybody is... yes my mom is one absolutely and my sister would be the fifth one <laughs> so do you ha- i'm sure you intend to get married um so how is that impacting your career and marriage and all of that how are you um, right now, my focus is my career, okay. not on getting married. <laughs> um, you know, right now, I want to focus on serving the Lord. Okay. And when God says it's time for me to have a partner that's exactly. going to better, you know, my purpose in life mm-hmm. um, that I was ordained to do, he's going to send them. But as of right now, my focus is, is getting things done and serving God in the best way that I can. So on your free time, what do you do? On my free time, actually, I box. Yeah. Interesting. That's, yeah. That's good. I love it. It's it's a great sport. Stress it's a reliever. lot of fun. It's a stress reliever. Um, it's about a two hour a day workout. <laughs> Is there something you do every day? Uh, yes, oh, I do work out every day. That's good. Absolutely. That's why you you're look in amazing. Shape. That's exactly. why. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's good. Well, so do you, go ahead. Now I was just going to ask you um, who you have on your playlist. Do you listen to any African artists? I Who's actually your favorite? don't listen to African artists. You I like don't. I like a lot of Caribbean reggae. Um, you know, as far as African artists, um, Akon is is probably the number one. <laughs> what would be like on your playlist? On my play, Akon would be on my playlist. Um, Barris Hammond would be on my playlist. Um, Whitney Houston's on my playlist. <laughs> so we need to introduce you to some African music. Yes, you do. Like Wizkid and um, what's his name, Davido, and all those people. Oh. Timaya, those kind of people. We need yes, to you do. You, yeah, you do. You do. Because I'm I'm very old school in the sense that you know I just I kind of listen to the Pandora stations. That's <laughs> it. And I don't watch much TV. <laughs> so it's like yeah, I'm not someone who kind of keeps up with what's going on. So yeah, you have you definitely have to introduce me to some more music. Okay. Any hobbies? Traveling, swimming. What What do you do? Like okay, this is fun. April. Like what's what's who's fun? April. I like cooking. Okay. Love cooking. What kind yes. of food? Nigerian food. I oh, can actually dude. cook very well. What's your favorite? I cook at full soup really oh, well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Awesome. Okay. All right. Wow. This has been amazing. This has been, you know, fun. I yes, it re- has. really, really appreciate you sitting down with us. Any last so questions? we always like to play a game with yes. our guest, and we'd like for you to take part. Um, we'll throw some words at you, and you just give us a quick response. Like, whatever comes to mind, just let it out. Okay. So I'll let you go first. Okay. All right, you ready? Yes. First thing that pops into your head, you can't wait. It's like one second, literally, what I say. It has to come out. Okay. All right. Okay. <laughs> All right. America. Beautiful. Nigeria. Even better. <laughs> Donald um, Trump. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. The face it's almost your the face. Face said it almost. <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh. Your face said it all. Okay. Afrobeat Live. Fun. Thank Bill you. Clinton. <laughs> <laughs> oh god! <laughs> the problem is negative words keep you coming. Can say next. You're gonna have to call. You can, yeah. You keep bringing up these names where negative things come to mind. Oh so gosh. yeah, and I can't say. <laughs> okay. Um, women. Beautiful. Childbirth. Painful. <laughs> That's how I feel. <laughs> um, let's see. Um, Hillary Clinton. Empowering. Money. Depressing. <laughs> Car. 
Fast. <laughs> Vacation. Fun. Bahamas. Beautiful. Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. That was awesome. That was really awesome. You. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you so much for being here. We really appreciate... I learned a lot today, personally. I really did. Um, I'm so glad to have met such a beautiful and powerful woman like you. You inspire me, honestly. You have, you know, opened my eyes to a lot of things. And, you know, I really wish you the best on all your endeavors. And is there anywhere we can, like, you know... You know, for us, like the fans or for the supporters, is there any way we can follow you or reach you or you're on any social media? Yes, I have a website and okay. it is www.electapril, A D E M I L U Y I dot com. So that's my full name, electapril, Ademilui dot com. I am on Facebook. So Facebook is the same. It would just be the forward slash and then my name. Okay. Um, so you could reach out to me that way. Um, but through my website, my email is there. There's a okay. phone number there. You can you can call. You can email. You can send me a message on Facebook. I'm on Twitter as well. Same thing. Just my first name and my last name. You'll find me on Twitter. You can message me there. Um, either of those are fine. Uh, okay. We're also having a fundraiser August 26th at the Silver Spring Civic Center. Okay. Awesome. Um, so we would like everyone to come out and have a good time. And we want to party, but we want to raise money for the cause. Mm -hmm. I mean, obviously, campaigns require money. Yes. Um, yeah, you can't do it without money. Yes. So. <laughs> <laughs> but nobody said we can't party at party the same, at the same time. time. So that's the goal is to have a great time. So I hope to see a lot of people there to support and have a good time and raise money for the cause. Awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you, you so much for delight. coming in. We really appreciate the time. Thank, Thank you so you. much for having me. Thank You're you. Awesome. <laughs>